Welcome to today's episode of the Declutter Hub podcast, your channel for super easy, no-nonsense advice on how to declutter and organize your home. Please welcome your hosts, professional organizers, Ingrid Jansen and Leslie Spellman. Hello and welcome listeners to episode 128 of the Declutter Hub podcast. I'm Ingrid. And I'm Leslie. If you have clutter and want to sort it out, this is the show for you. Now, in today's episode, Leslie and I are talking about decluttering technology. Oh, Leslie, the dreaded wires and everything that's like techie. Oh, are we ready to talk about this? Because we see spaghetti. <laughs> Sit spaghetti. <laughs> Yeah, everyone will be quaking in their boots, won't they, at the moment about the tech because it's a necessary part of our lives at the moment, isn't it? And it moves so fast and we want to keep up with technology and we want the latest thing quite often. And so what happens then is that we have tons and tons of stuff that we're not quite sure what to do with or that still needs something doing to it before we can get rid of it. And so, as Ingrid says, what that means is mobile phones languishing in drawers, wires all tangled together. And if we haven't kept control of that, it's completely unmanageable, isn't it? Yes, we know. We've. I imagine now people listening to us going, rolling their eyes going, have you been in my house, Leslie and Ingrid? I have drawers full of, of black wires. And I've got absolutely no idea. In the mix are some other like plugs and headphones that have died. And then there's a random tablet and there's a computer that, from the Stone Ages. There's a, there's a, a laptop or, or, or whatever it is, all these things. And then later you think, oh, yeah, I used to know which plug would win which, which item. But now, because I've just bung it into this drawer or in this cupboard, and now it's like all just blah. <laughs> and of course, one of the other thing is that quite often we pass off the responsibility of that stuff to our partner, don't we? <laughs> yes. And so oh, no, that's nothing to do with me, that technology. My husband deals with that. That's what I mean. So I, I, don't, I don't know anything about that. And so I don't want to do that. Or my wife deals with that, whatever that might be. So we pass off responsibility. I'm going to get my son to look at that. If we don't quite understand it, we don't want to tackle it. And so we leave it for someone else. And so we have this kind of delegation of responsibility for tech. We're responsible for the clutter. Well, no, quite often we're the ones who get bothered by the drawers and things, but they're full of stuff that actually we think is someone else's domain. So it's an interest in psychology. And we love talking about psychology, don't we, Ingrid? Well, I do anyway. (laughs) Well, I tell you technology in this house I am not responsible for so I'm like nodding my head going that's me you're describing me I'm like hello husband can you just deal with this I've got absolutely no clue what am I supposed to be doing I'm very good at labeling wires but to actually deal with the hmm I don't know what this stuff is that's not me that's your responsibility that's not me so this sounds very familiar this this one hits close to home Leslie It does. And it's so useful seeing as we're running a technology based business, Ingrid, where we use technology all day, every day. And we're like, oh, I don't really like that. Um, (laughs) So, yeah, I'm the one that's at the other side of Zoom while she's yelling for Jan, her husband, to fix this and that. He's like the technology master that comes to get her out of a hole all the time. I, on the other hand, am very autonomous and manage my own tech. Thank you very much, Ingrid Johnson. I know. But anyway, I am always very impressed with you I'm not gonna lie (laughs) but you're right but she's writing things down this you've got all the skills I'll give you that you've got all the skills technology's not your bag but you've got all the skills that make up for that in abundance Ingrid but anyway let's go back to talking about wires cords tablets phones laptops etc and we feel like a lot of them are just sort of languishing in these drawers and left to die Sounds really like dramatic, doesn't it? But that's what we see. We see mobile phones that you didn't use since 2005 or whatever, still in a drawer waiting for you to take off the photos that happen to be on it or making sure 
you don't pass it on to somebody when it's got sensitive material on there. And so we procrastinate hugely over dealing with technology and doing the things that need to be done with it when we should do it immediately when we swap it over to a new version. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what, Leslie, I'm, I'm, we're talking about this and I know we're going to focus on laptops and phones and wires, but I'm now in my head, it's like, yes, it's the USB sticks as well, right? They're in a drawer somewhere or the CDs with photos on, which I found a couple recently that I am now actually putting on my computer because I thought, hmm, they've been in this cupboard for a very long time and I just want to have them on my computer so I know what they are. I can then file them away, or delete them or whatever. But you need to take action because otherwise the tech is going to become completely obsolete and then it's completely wasted. Well, the thing is, when you replace something for something new, you need to immediately decide what's going to happen with this old piece of tech, isn't it? Yes, so the thing is about technology is it's really interesting because we make a very intentional decision, don't we, to upgrade technology. So quite often in this country, we might have a mobile phone contract, for example, two-year contract, and then we we try and then upgrade because financially it makes sense to upgrade it after two years, and we want the latest things, and they're very good. People like Apple, Apple the Android phone, Samsung, etc., very good, aren't they, at convincing us that we need the next best thing and so many of us then follow suit and buy the next best thing and that's the same with tvs we've still got people you know we said we were talking about we talked about phones and laptops and stuff like that today but how many people do you know who get a new tv keep the old one have got a dvd player have still kept the vhs player that's because there's a project with the vhs player still waiting to happen and it's exactly the same whatever kind of tech it is tablets, mobile phones, there's information on that computer that we feel that we need. And so the message for today is take action quickly, but it's a big job. And that's why we procrastinate on it, or we think it's a big job. So that's where the problem lies, isn't it, Ingrid? Yeah. And and that's a point really well made, Leslie. I think a lot of times we also think it's a big job. No, if, for example, if you still have a VHS player and you have VHS videos that you need to watch because you need to see if there's anything like a wedding or a christening or anything like that on it, that's a big job. But actually maybe pulling a plug in a laptop and factory reset it so you can then responsibly give it to somebody else is not a big job. But because we kind of see it as all like, oh, I need to power it up and the wires and the it immediately feels like a big job, while not necessarily it always is. Yeah, I think technology these days is not a big job because somebody, some clever people who are techie has thought about migrating information very quickly. I can walk to the end of my road. There's a computer shop at the end of my road. And if I wanted to, I could go in there, probably pay 20 or 30 pounds, and that guy would have it done in a heartbeat. So even if I can't do it myself, we can find people very easily, very readily who will do that. Whereas jumping back to the kind of VHS scenario that we mentioned, that is more complicated because that involves kind of complicated technology, quite a lot of money to get that transferred over if we outsource it. But so really let's focus back on the more modern equipment that we've got and what are we gonna do with them? We've made an intentional purchase. We've decided that we want to upgrade. And so we have got a new phone, got a new tablet, got a new laptop for whatever reason. The ideal scenario is that we take action there and then as part of our purchase and transfer that information any information that we need over onto the new device and make a decision there and then what we're going to do with that old piece of tech. Because as you rightly say, we talked about them, you know, old phones being left in drawers to die in grid is it could be really useful to someone, anyone. It could be really useful to a family member who's not got a great phone that you can pass your not, you know, better phone onto. It could be great if it goes to charity, we could send it to a mobile phone recycling place that will give you money for it. We could pass it on to charity if we wanted to do that. While somebody can really get good use out of something that's much more modern in its technology. But what we do is we don't do it, we procrastinate, we leave it in a drawer, and then by the next time we look, it's 10 years old. How many times do we find eight nine ten mobile phones in drawers we don't know where the wires are for that thing because the wires are separate from the phones 
it's complicated. So it's something that you really need to keep a handle on now. So if there's one thing we want to talk about today, it's try and take control of your tech so you know what's what, you know what you've got. Yes, there's a decluttering project, but also look at the stuff that you've got at the moment. And do you know, is everything labeled up? Do you know what wire goes with what and what little accessories that come with that phone or that laptop do and things like that? Because we can very quickly lose a handle on it, can't we? Yeah, and I think so. But what I do find out as well is, is laptops, especially laptops with old laptops with photos on them. And then, of course, you have to look into, okay, can I migrate them to the cloud that I have? But some people don't then realize they don't have a cloud yet or they're not sorting it properly. So there's a lot of times a snowball effect of things that need to happen. And almost it starts with, let's find the wire to this thing so I can actually turn it on. <laughs> You know, huh, oh, yeah, it was completely broken or I need to do something with this information. So it it involves investigating. It involves watching a YouTube video. How do I empty the information from my laptop? It involves finding the, or maybe even ordering the right wire so you can actually power up your piece of equipment again, especially that first sort is intense it will get easier the more you get on top of it and maybe you just instead of starting with the oldest piece you just need to work your way back because you still recognize which stuff goes together i'm not gonna lie ingrid this is a big job and it's not for the faint-hearted but it's a job that we don't really relish is it so let's think about other jobs that we put off i really want to do my sentimental stuff i really want to do my photographs i really want to go through my letters or cards or something like that because ultimately we we know and we think that those things are going to bring us joy. So we put them off, but we still know that when we do do it, it's going to be quite nice. Whereas we don't think that going through mobile phones and pulling information off there is going to be nice because for the most part, it's kind of not. But there are photographs on there for the most part, aren't there, that we can see. So it can be a nice project. And let me tell you, when you get control of your tech, it feels very, very satisfying, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And it's it's just peace of mind, because I think then, because you know that that laptop has now no longer got photos, it no longer has emails, it no longer has contacts on there. You factory set it. It's empty. And then you can also then start to think about, okay, where's this piece of equipment going next? Because there's different options, isn't there? It's not all just throw it in the bin. There's lots of places old tech can go. Of course, you know, if it is donkey's years old and no longer used to anybody, it needs to go to the recycling center. They've got special containers where you can put stuff like that in. So that's a first a place where it can go. But there are you know, lots of people, especially if the equipment like a laptop or computer is is not as old and is quite recent, but it's just no longer needed in your house. Especially now with so many kids homeschooling, people working from home. You know, any school probably would love a computer that's, you know, still relatively new so they can get kids to work. Yeah, and, and that's the point, is that a lot of these things are very new and still very serviceable. We've chosen that they're not good enough for right, us for us right now. You know, my computer that I got rid of, yes, I need a better computer because we've got to do a lot of technology, but it's perfectly serviceable to someone who's never had a computer before. It might be a little bit slower, but if you've never had one, you don't realize how slow it is. We realize how slow it is because <laughs> we've got a lot of technological stuff that we need to deal with and we need that bigger capacity. But once you wipe all the information off and restore it back to factory settings, then it can be a perfectly serviceable computer, can't it? And there are lots of very clever people out there who can fix things and make it that even if it's not today. Yeah. So what would you suggest everybody does with boxes of old technology? Because we see those a lot as well, don't we, Leslie? Yeah, I mean, that takes us into a whole new realm of chat, doesn't it? Which is appliance boxes. And so quite often when we talk about appliance boxes, we talk about making space in lofts and spare bedrooms with TV boxes and printer boxes and things like that. But also there's boxes that come with, you know, iPhones and tablets. And we feel that we should keep the box, don't we? Why are we keeping the box? Why are we keeping the box to a laptop? Question, why are we keeping the box to a laptop? Any ideas? Do you keep the box to your laptop? Uh, no, not, not to my laptop, no. If it's a brand new phone, I would keep it for a little while 
because you know you don't want to throw it away when it's just arrived in the post, but I'm not keeping it forever and ever. And the small boxes for phones are actually really nice containers to use when you're um, organizing your drawers. <laughs> If you find like a whole stash of old boxes, if they're very, very big, I would say just recycle them, let them go. You're never going to think I might move house in the future and I might need to pack up my computer. I'm going to use the original box to package this up unless you're like moving next month. That makes sense. But if you don't even have a, a day to move house in the first place, if you're not even thinking about selling your house, put those boxes into recycling. But the small ones that are for like tablets and phones, they are perfect little containers to, to put in your drawers. Yeah, they're perfect little containers to containerize the thing that we're supposed to be decluttering, aren't they? So they're <laughs> perfect for containerizing things like pen drives and USB drives and little tiny things that you open your iPhone with. I can't even remember those little kind of yeah. things that you prod in to open things up. And, you know, if you've got all of those little things, stationary paper clips, all of those things are fantastic in iPhone boxes. So I've done full stationary boxes where I have found enough at iPhone boxes to containerize a whole stationary drawer and they're nice and sturdy and white and not too branded. And so they look great and they are perfect. So, but we're not advocating keeping loads and loads of boxes for this purpose. Yeah, Leslie and Ingrid said I needed to keep all my boxes in case I want to containerize, um, but they are quite useful. But a laptop box is not, and a laptop box is not gonna make your product be any more no one expects a box with a laptop if they buy a laptop from you or if you repurpose or recycle a laptop you don't need it if you return a laptop nine times out of ten you're just going to carry a laptop back into the store if it needs fixing so but we have this obsession with keeping boxes don't we because we feel that the value of our things are going to be higher if there's a box with it and that may well be the case but you need to balance up what's more important for me the space or the fact that I might get an extra 10 pounds if it's boxed. That's where you've got to be realistic and you've got to balance that up and compromise. Okay, so Ingrid, we know that there's lots of people out there who've got this jumbled up drawer with old phones and child, um, baby monitors and all kinds of random things, headphones and blah, blah. Yeah? Yeah. Headphones from airplanes yeah. that we don't want anymore and when someone's got a pair of apple ipods things like that you know there's just things that are we don't really need these anymore but the problem is we don't know how expensive these things are we're kind of a little bit lost with that how are we going to do it so what's the plan here when we so we're tackling a tech drawer I'm not going to say exactly how to do that yes we need to declutter it Yes, we need to see if we can get any money for recycling some of this tech potentially. So recycle it to a good home or there are recycling places that will pay good money for reasonably up-to-date models of phones. And so, you know, use that because that might be £100 or more. Do you know what I mean? So we're not big advocates of selling things. But if you've got a phone that's only two years old and you can get £100, £150 for it, of course you're going to try and sell it on. Or you're going to try and give it to somebody. You know, so what are we going to do? What's the plan? What's the end goal, Ingrid? I think for me, it's, it, it's, it, it's a bit like being a detective, isn't it? When you start a project like this, I think you need to make sure that you've got some room to work where you can kind of gather everything together. And then you kind of start to play detective. What wire goes with which appliance? And it starts to come back. When, as soon as you start to rummage, you're like, oh, yeah. That's the wire for so-and-so. Oh, those, these are my headphones. Or, oh, this was from a, a baby monitor that I had 10 years ago. Or that's the plug. Let me investigate. You're really playing detective to find out what goes with what. And then you can kind of start to make a bit. You need to categorize it. And then I think you need to first do a bit of a like, okay, what's like falling off? How many times do we see headphones where you can actually see the inner wires? And it's like, okay, they need to go and be brought to a recycling center because you can't sell them on you can't that's dangerous and when you see the little red wires the red and blue wires from the inside or the 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 outside piece of the ear thing is like falling off it's like okay right this this is broken let it go bring it to a recycling center don't even worry about it and it's all about categorizing and then taking it step by step to figure out what needs to happen with each of these things and you probably want to work from the easier things to the hardest things. So if you know that there is a laptop with photographs, you're certain it's just been 
you need to leave that to the side and first move on to let's first remove the bulk. And then later I'm going to do a deep dive on, okay, how am I going to get this stuff on this laptop? And if you've got a lot of this stuff, it's not going to be done in an afternoon. You know, you probably need to do it in phases and over time to figure out what's going to happen with this equipment. Yeah, definitely. This is quite a big project to do. If you've, if you're in a little bit of a pickle with your wires and your technology, I think this is going to span several weeks because you're going to do your decluttering. You're going to want to work out what your wires are. You're going to want to label your wires. You're going to want to transfer information that might involve outsourcing that job to somebody else or doing it yourself, which may take several hours to do, depending on what you're working with. So don't think that this is going to be done in a day. Now make that your monthly goal for April, right? By the end of April, my technology is only going to contain things that I'm currently using at the moment and maybe one spare if necessary for the whole house, I would say. You know, I don't think we need a spare per person unless you've got kids that throw their phones and smash their phone cases every single week or drop them in the bath or the toilet different matter entirely but you know really think that through and think how many spares do I actually need do I need a firm from six years ago what's the purpose of that and so you've really got to be strong because the difference between technology and other things that we store in our house is that it's one is definitely better than the other isn't it that's different so if you were talking about two bottles of perfume you might have one that you prefer and one that you prefer less you might wear both the bottom line is with technology you're definitely going to use the more up-to-date one. Oh, that's a given, isn't it? So it's a very different and in some ways an easier process, but it's this fear that we have of losing information, of information getting into the wrong hands, of not quite knowing what's what and what to do with it that makes us then procrastinate. And that's the real challenge with technology, isn't it? Yeah. And while you're at it, don't forget all the accessories as well, the phone cases and the laptop cases or the Kindle that's no longer with you, but you still have the case to put the Kindle in. All of those things that needs to be tackled as well while you're doing this project. And then you can feel, oh, it feels so nice, doesn't it, Leslie, to actually do this? And my husband recently did a massive declutter project because we we had cupboards built and we moved some items around and we kind of put one cupboard, but we kind of put all the stuff. And I went, right, okay, we need to pull this now out and just have a real look at all of this. We've done it before, but let's just do another one because my children are getting older. So they're getting, of course, you know, when they're young, they get an old mobile phone and they, when they're younger, it doesn't matter. But now when they're teenagers, they need a better phone as well. So we upgraded. So they got our old phones, but the old one was still there. So we went, okay, we need to kind of really dive deep into this now and get it sorted. And he was quite ruthless. I'm very, very happy to say. So we had a nice big bag of lots of random stuff that's now ready to be brought to the recycling center at some point. Yeah. When they reopen. So all good to go. When the weather gets better, that's my next trip, Leslie. To the recycling center. I know, I love it. <laughs> the day out's the recycling center. Yeah. <laughs> Can't go anywhere. You want to go to a nice restaurant or a bar, but actually, the day out is going to the recycling center. I yeah. think, um, you know, it's interesting, really, because it is. it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of knowledge if you've not got that knowledge. And to be fair, most people have not got that knowledge. Unless you're some kind of computer geeky kind of person, you don't know what plug or what and wire is for which thing unless you investigate. I did a big investigation project, a research project, didn't I, for our membership because we have wires and cords as a sort of separate thing in our membership. And I went through it and I know exactly what USB-C is and a USB. And it's really quite satisfying to know what all those things are and what era they belong to and things like that and what things are for. So you can work out, am I likely to need that in the future or can I let that go? You know, because we just keep computer wires from computers that have been obsolete for 10, 15 years. And the bottom line is, if you need to buy that wire again, if you make a mistake, which is what all of us fear, you can get hold of them again for pennies, probably. And so don't need to worry too much about it. I think that's what stops us in our tracks a little bit, isn't it, Ingrid? Yeah, for sure, sure, for sure. And that's why I think it's important when you get new stuff in, label that plug label that plug immediately when it comes in make that part of the the unboxing and the unwrapping and the setting up and the okay where am i going to put the manual and the little key that needs to open this stuff and all of those things one part is i need to label this plug so i know later 
where it goes and belongs to. Because if you're with four people, like we, we're in this house, four people, four mobile phones, we got a tablet, you know, there's an I- iPad somewhere, uh, lots of computers, because we're all so much more in technology because of the homeschooling, everything that's going on. So there's wires everywhere already in use. So if everything that you have in use is working at the moment, start maybe with labeling those. So at least moving forward, you know where they were and then go, okay, I've now labeled. I know what's going on currently. Now I'm going to move on to my random drawer with lots of wires that I don't know what spaghetti this is. So I think that's a nice loop back to the beginning then, isn't it, Leslie? It is. Spaghetti. Very nice, Ingrid talking about spaghetti so yeah everyone's fearful this is a big project isn't it this is mm. a this is a biggie We've not yeah. spoken about it before not for the faint-hearted but what was what we're saying to you is think about that for a goal for a whole month and work through it on your own with people who understand things in your house as well you know people who you perceive to have responsibility for this is where decluttering gets hard because you're going to have to ask for help potentially as well with this because even if you've completely got a handle on it, those wires are going to belong to other people. And so you've really got to, it's a kind of, it's a whole household project, isn't it? That needs to be tackled and needs to be done in a very specific methodical way. Yeah. So good luck with that. <laughs> we, <laughs> we know we're like, yeah, we're just going to tell you what to do and run because we've yeah. done before and it takes like days and days to do. So good luck with that. Good yeah. luck with that. Good luck. <laughs> Let us know how you get on in the Facebook group. Now, before we go, listeners, can I just talk to you, Leslie, about our Managing Mementos Masterclass on Tuesday? I know you've you finally got it nailed, the MMM, haven't you? After it's all over. It was a lot of fun, wasn't it? We loved we we just love going live, don't we? Bottom line. You can't stop us from talking about decluttering. We just love it so much. And the Mementos Masterclass was particularly fab because it got right to the heart of what people get really worried you know when you get down to the nitty-gritty of decluttering we're all quite sentimental aren't we so what a fab masterclass that was on Tuesday and it was our first masterclass and so I know you in particular Ingrid were a little bit on the nervous side weren't you I was I was I don't know why because I love talking about decluttering so it's like hmm, I shouldn't be nervous about this but I was but I just I loved it I enjoyed it it was so great to see so many people there and before we forget to tell you If you have signed up, but you have not watched it yet, the time to watch the replay is ending tonight at 12. So you've got today left to watch it on replay. And that is only if you are listening to our podcast on the day that it comes out. Yeah. So if you're not listening to this on Friday, the 12th of March, sadly, you've missed out on the opportunity to watch it. Yes, yes. The replay is available until midnight tonight. And also, and so is our special offer. So we have a sentimental course that you can buy for $69 instead of $99. So if you're listening to this on the 12th of March, you've got until midnight tonight to use our special offer. Yeah, and of course, we have a special offer running on the membership as well as part of the masterclass, don't we? Yeah. So we also have our special membership price also going till midnight on Friday the 12th of March which is today or it might not be today if you're not listening just depends when you're listening so if you want to buy a full membership if you've got more than just sentimental items in your home that need sorting out then you can buy our full membership and get access to absolutely everything including the sentimental course for $219 but that runs out on tonight at midnight well that's it for this episode listeners so Like I said again, good luck with sorting out all your wires. We hope we haven't frightened you too much and you're rolling your eyes now at your podcast playing on. Yeah, I need to do this and I need to start thinking about it. So we hope you are inspired to take action because that's what we're all about. If you want more handy tips and advice from Leslie and I, you can find us in lots of places. We have a fab supportive Facebook group called the Declutter Hub Community, which is a great starting point. And we have an Instagram and Facebook page too. And you can find us as at Declutter Hub. And we'd love to see you there. Take a look at members.declutterhub.com to find out more about our membership. If you don't want to miss our next podcast, subscribe to the Declutter Hub podcast and it will pop into your notifications each 
Friday. We've been asking for some reviews, which make a huge difference to us. So if you've enjoyed today or any of our other podcasts, we would love you to take a couple of minutes out of your day to leave us a review. We absolutely adore reading them. And it's just so wonderful to see your wonderful feedback. So thanks so much for listening and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Declutter Hub podcast. Check out declutterhub.com for more inspiration and don't forget to tune in next week.